We're going to look at another task right now, which comes from Go Far. Are you familiar with that resource? Yes. Go Far is a bank of formative assessment items that's located through SLDS, which is wonderful because it has been updated. Not only that, but you will see student work you will see the examples. You will see scored student work for open-ended items. It's just a great resource. The task we're looking at right now addresses GPE5, GPE6, and GPE7. All right, here's our quadrilateral, WXYZ. In part A, we're going to look at the area of the quadrilateral and show our work and explain our answers. In part B, we'll perform a dilation by a factor of three and explain how the areas of WXYZ and its image compare. The reason we added GPE6 to this task is because we want to extend it a little bit further and do an example of partitioning a segment. And this is an interesting standard. Uh, some students have trouble with that. So this is a commonly asked question from teachers. How do we teach partitioning a segment in a coordinate plane? Therefore, we added one more extension to that. We'll do that later, after we finish parts A and B. So right now, I'd like for you to work in groups on both parts, and we'll be ready to share our work when done. She's going to yeah. do it by the time. Oh, no, I found the distance. Is no, right. well, I was getting okay. ready to start okay. a rectangle so around, find the whole area, and subtract out the little triangles. Okay. So, yeah. let's just so basically, you just have to find the dimensions of each of these right triangles to cut it in half. Which will be a lot speedier than what I'm trying to do here, probably. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't give us two triangles. That gives us a... Are these parallel? No, we decide they're not. No, they're not. Now, we will have our group two present their strategies and solutions to parts A and B. We had a couple of different approaches, and I'm going to give you the one that ended up working out the best, and then I'll show you the one that we had issues with. Um, I don't know if, most, if some of you did, but what this was Deidre's idea to start with. Um, she made a larger rectangle because she knew that this was not a rectangle. She could tell that these were not uh, perpendicular or not right angles. So she made a larger one which made one, two, three, four smaller right triangles. And since it was a right triangle that was very easy to determine which was the height and which was the base. And so she found the entire area to be 66 of everything. And then as she calculated, you can see here, she calculated her areas of all the triangles and then subtracted 66 minus 31, got 35 square units, which actually gave the most accurate account first. Now, mine is a little bit crazy, but I'm just going to tell you where I went first, where I know some of your kids might. I know it's, it's a little bit messy, but I actually divided mine into two triangles. So I had, I drew a diagonal here, and then what I ended up having to do a little bit more work is I had to figure out where's my altitude or my height going to be, so I had to know perpendicular slopes, and then I had to do that twice, and then I ended up using the distance formula four times. A lot more work for me. Did anybody do the similar things? Okay. Yeah. What did you do differently? Because we are from middle school. That is the approach that you take to finding the area, is you divide it into triangles. And then that's mm -hmm. exactly what the, you did. That was the approach that we took, too. We divided it into three triangles. Because that is decomposing shapes, yes. which they learn in elementary school yes. and, and learn in again in sixth school. grade. Yes. All right, and then to answer part B, we 
actually dilated it and made a larger image on a piece of graph paper. And so we know dialing does make it larger because it was a factor of three, and factor means multiply. So every one of our coordinates had to be multiplied by three. So we got these new coordinates that you see, and probably to be even more precise, we could have labeled like Y prime, like probably this should be Y prime and you know Z is a Z prime and so on, so that we would know that is the, the dilated figure. And then we took the same exact approach that we did the first time and um, calculated the areas of everything that was new. So we found out that it was 315, and so how does 315 compare to 35? And so we compared it, and it was a factor. So in other words, 35 times what gets me to 315, and we found it to be 9. So it's nine times. All right, so is there any questions? Yes? I have a question. How does nine, the factor of nine, relate to the scale factor of three? I, I saw it where the x, the horizontal and the vertical, was increasing by a factor of three. Mm -hmm. And so we did the three times three. Mm -hmm. When I was teaching elementary, I mean middle school, um, seventh grade, math we did scale factor and we did um, scale models uh -huh. and so to teach the students how to uh, discover this same concept we um, would just take the dimensions of several rectangles just simple rectangles and we would look at the the scale factor and then we would look at how the area changed and we look at several different examples until the students discovered that relationship between the scale factor and then the area, I mean the area, how the area changed based on the scale factor. So that they could see that if they took the scale factor and squared it, then that would give you the relationship between the area of the two figures. Okay. That is wonderful. I love the words discover mm -hmm. I love, and, and relationship. This, this indicates very high level of complexity of the task. Mm -hmm. Your students discovered the relationship. This is so powerful, mm -hmm. so non-traditional. This is student-centered learning, right? They create meaning of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about when would this be actually used in our curriculum. Um, and so in unit one, they do talk about transformations and dilations in the in geometry. And in analytic geometry, it's within the unit of transfer. No, it's actually in coordinate algebra mm -hmm. in, the, in unit five, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so they would have already talked about dilations. Mm -hmm. So that should not be new. But if you approached it with my way of distance formula, that's not until later. Mm -hmm. That's in that unit six of coordinate algebra, which I think is unit five in, in the geometry you probably don't want to start with this one way back in unit one because you really have to have some of these other things although you could start with it and then just see where they go with it and then bring it back in unit five it's up to you and leah um would you mind coming up with oh, jennifer sure. and maybe you can share both of your okay. bo both of your solutions um i divided the larger figure into four smaller triangles four right triangles and then there's a square in the middle and so my um, my large figure had triangles that were just exactly the same as their triangles on the outside. So then I took the, the rectangle that Deidre had drawn and I put it on the outside and we noticed that wherever there was a triangle on the inside, it had the same area as the triangle on the outside in the big rectangle. Just thought that was a cool observation that this was, you know, this was 112.5, this was 112.5 and it worked that way on every one. Okay. What do you guys think about I really, this? I really like, because we had a hard time partitioning, and I really like how you started with a square, and that made it where it would come out to where you could have right angles and wouldn't have to worry about mm -hmm. um, final And we figured and out, too, that any time you take, like, a vertical line from one point and go down to the horizontal line of the next point and mm -hmm. stop, and then you do the opposite. You do a horizontal line till you get to the vertical line, and you can continue that pattern you'll always get, get four right triangles right. and a square in the middle. Mm -hmm. Because it allowed for multiple approaches to the task. Yes. So when we plan our lessons, we need to think about it. What, what do I want my closing to look like? Do I want rich, powerful discussions? That would kind of dictate the, the choice of resources and activities um, for our lesson.